You've probably noticed that the get and set point positions are able to store a single get node inside of the compound. And a lot of these compounds are actually just one or two node compounds that are making the job of building these trees easier for you. But if you actually want to get the point position where you can actually input values rather than simply outputting the self object, we can use a get data node. If we look under the data access found in the tools menu, a simple get data node will do the trick. We can input values and output values of different types. Now in order to get a 3D vector out of the raycast location, we need to get the point position from a location. To do that, we can use the versatility of the get data node. Again, it's polymorphic, so we can change its type at will. If I was to actually look up the self object, you'll notice that we can go and find things like, well, let's see here, if I can open up the environment model, I'll look under the transform group, and I'll look under ground interaction, we can get things like the point position, the point normal, uh, a point location, so I can actually extract the normals from the raycast location and use those in my in my calculations. But in this case all I want to do is get the point position per raycast location. So rather than referring to the self object which is already referenced here, I'm getting the point positions after the raycast has been conducted. So I'm just going to daisy chain the point position derive the point position from this location by typing in point position. If I use the location to drive the source parameters of my get data node, you can see that we resolve the 3D vector problem and we now have a 3D vector per point position uh, per point on our ground object. A 3D vector into a 3D vector now gives us a deformation. The problem though is not quite over yet. If I press play, well again I'll have to probably move the grid back or at least move the camera back, we're not really getting any deformation yet. And the reason that's not happening is because we haven't told the points which direction to move in once we calculate this intersection. So in the raycast node we can tell the points which direction to move in by specifying a direction vector and all I want to do is have the points move down. We could use a cutoff distance if we wanted to, but at this point we're simply going to use the entire geometry. If I enabled a cutoff distance I could uh, add a little more efficiency to the uh, to the calculations. So if I move back here, let's actually see what's going on. We actually don't have any meaningful penetration here, so let's see if I can't move this setup a little bit. Okay, let's just make it really obvious for now. Okay, so now we're getting a deformation. If we need to add more detail to our compound or to our grid, we can do so by adding further subdivisions. So at the moment, again, if I run Shift S and select my grid, I've got 34,000 uh, polygons if I do a one level subdivision. I now have 135,000, and I'll freeze the modeling stack there, and we'll see how this works, see if we can get a little more definition to our compound.